Hey guys, it's me, 80 Summer for 4. So today, guys, we'll be discussing about the Europa League, guys. Europa League, guys. So we're going to be giving my Europa League predictions for this season's Europa League, guys. So if you're new on here, considering that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. There will be time to description below. And let me let me know your Europa League predictions in the comments. And of course, also the bracket challenge, which I'll also be doing, guys. I'll be doing the bracket challenge as well, of course. Anyways, let's start with the first game, which we have here is Man United vs. Sevilla. Guys, Sevilla this season haven't been terrible. They have been been bad this season. They've they've just sacked San Pauli, guys. And Sevilla this season are languishing in the relegation zone, man. They have not been great this season. They're struggling to score goals. They're struggling to defend as well. And my problem with Sevilla is just they haven't been great. That being said, though, they are Europa League. They are Europa League heritage. They have the Europa League as a thing, and they do have the second leg at home, which could be very massive for them because they have been really really bad on the road this season in the Europa League. You know, losing away um, to, um, what is it called, um, PSV, and they lost away to um, F um, Ferenbache, right? So it's going to be interesting to see what happens the first leg, because for me, United, if they can win the first leg by a big margin, then the second leg is going to just be a, a formality, right? Because the thing is, Sevilla, they have been good at home this season. That's been the thing, and they've kept two clean sheets in the home in the process. For Man United, on the other hand, they've just they've been amazing. So they've knocked all the La Liga teams out of the um, well. They eliminated two La Liga teams in the Europa League, of course, Real Betis and Barcelona, and they've been great this season. Eric Ten Hag's done a great job of this team. You know, you look at players. Rashford has been scoring goals. Casemiro been what a signing that he's been. Anthony as well been chipping in some goals there. You got Weghorst as well. This United team have been amazing. Juan Basaka has been revitalized, and I feel like for this United team, they've been looking so good. And they're definitely one of the favorites for the Europa League, of course. And for Sevilla, man, obviously notable players will be uh, Bono, their goalkeeper. Then obviously, you know, Yusuf and Naziri, who's been pretty much their best goal scorer this season. And then obviously, you know, you got Goodedge as well, who's been scoring screamers. And yeah, so there's not really been anything special for Sevilla. They've been really, really bad. I expect United to comfortably win this. I will be very surprised if Sevilla manages to win this because they be, they've been really bad this season. So who knows, though? Um, because United have never beaten Sevilla in their history, so Sevilla have actually got three wins and one draw against them. So Sevilla do have the better head-to-head, -head, and we'll see if that prevails in this one. But I'm going to go with United to advance. Next matchup, which we have here, um, is Juventus versus Sporting. I want to talk about Sporting, guys, because this was an incredible achievement. For them to knock Arsenal out, one of the Europa League favorites, in the round of 16 is quite fantastic. And yes, I know people are going to tell me Arsenal to use their second string team. And, you know, Arsenal didn't really take the competition seriously. It's, it's all blasphemous to me. Because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you lost. Yes, you can make the excuses that, oh, you play your second string team or whatever. You're focusing on the Premier League. Arsenal have to win the Premier League now. And it is pretty crazy that the fourth best team in Portugal knocked out the first place team in the English Premier League. It's is quite an incredible achievement. And for Sporting in particular, man, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here because they've been amazing this season. You know, obviously they've been incredible this season, you know. And I like what they've been doing. You know, I like how Pedro Gonzalez has been amazing, you know, amazing for them. Guate as well has been great. You got Sebastian Cortez as well. The Anand, who's been a good goalkeeper. And this Sporting team knows how to score goals. My big concern with the Sporting team is I think defensively they're very vulnerable. And I think with the Godson missing the first leg through red card, because he got a red card in the first game against Arsenal, he will miss this first leg, which could be a huge, huge blow. Because I believe the first leg is away in Italy. So, um, let me go ahead and double check that real quick. Um, just check that real quickly, because I believe it is away in Italy. So, that's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Because, for me, that's going to be the massive, the defining game, is that how they do away in Italy. Because if they can get a draw... That'll be a great result for them. But it's going to be very difficult because Juventus this season are all in for this Europa League. You know, Allegri knows that this Juventus team will likely not get top four this season in the Serie A. And they pretty much have to go all in for this competition. You know, you have the likes of, obviously, um, Chesney, who's been a great in goal. Then, obviously, you have players like Pogba, Di Maria, who's a statement to make. He's trying to go all in for this. You got Chiesa, Vlaovic. Juventus have a ridiculous amount of talent. And it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out because Sporting actually do have a... Sporting have actually played against Juventus before in the past. They've got one win and one draw. Actually, I think one loss and one draw against Juventus. So Juventus are currently undefeated. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. And I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Because Juventus, man, I, I could think they could struggle. They could struggle, especially the second league being away from home. That being said, I still expect Juventus to advance. I think Juventus are, have far too much quality 
for this one. And I think Uguate's suspension will really cost Sporting a lot in the first leg. So, and my prediction is Juventus to advance. Now, for the penultimate game, guys. The penultimate game. Feyenoord versus Roma. <sighs> Revenge? For those that don't know, this was the rematch of the Conference League final last season. Which, of course, Roma won the final 1-0. Thanks to a Zaniolo goal. And I think for this one, guys, you can see Feyenoord this season been so much better. Arno Slot has done a fantastic job with this team. This team has been amazing. You know, look at players like Jahan Kambaka, who's been amazing in San Antonio. Jimenez has been great. You know, then I look at their um the goalkeeper as well. Bijo has been great as well. And this Feyenoord team has been amazing. And they just put seven past Shakhtar in the previous round. And that is pretty incredible because Shakhtar is not that bad of a team, you know. And I just think that for Feyenoord in particular, man, it's going to be very interesting. My one concern for Feyenoord, though, is that they may be more focused on the Eredivisie because they're in a huge title race right now in the Eredivisie, you know, fighting neck and neck with Ajax. They just won the, the Dirk Classicer a few days, a um, few weeks ago, so that's going to be very, very massive. So I have a six-point lead at the top, but it's still very tight, you know. Where's Roma this season? Jose Mourinho, man. He's going all in for the Europa League. Of course, we know his record in this competition is quite spectacular. And he's actually not lost many home games. And the second leg being at home for Roma is very, very interesting to see what happens. I think the key for Feyenoord is that they have to win the first leg. And I think for Roma, man, players like Tammy Abrams going to need to step up. Paulo Dybala needs to step up. And then obviously Patricio as well. So it's going to be very interesting because I do think Feyenoord actually could get revenge. And we saw how good Feyenoord were in the Europa Conference League final last season. But that being said, man, it's against Roma. And we know how good of our team Roma is. So... For this game, guys, my prediction for this one, guys, I am going to go with Roma to advance. I just feel like for me, Roma have just wait. They're just going to give everything for this competition. And I feel like for Feyenoord, they're going to, you know, I think they're going to be more focused on the Eredivisie and try to win the league for the first time in a long time. And so that's why I feel like Feyenoord may not take it as seriously. But um, we'll see, though, because it could be very interesting to see what happens. And, yeah, I believe Roma got the better head-to-head -head with two wins and I think a draw in there, I think. And then finally, the last matchup, guys. This, for me, is the matchup I'm actually most intrigued. Most, most intrigued here because Bayer Leverkusen and Union single loss have been fantastic. Bayer Leverkusen, it's been incredible to see what Javi Alonso has done with this team because this team, domestically speaking, have been poor this season. You know, I look at players like Schick's been coming to life. you got Florian Wurtz has been amazing. And I think for this Bayer Leverkusen team, they're kind of be looking at this as that, yeah, this is our competition. We're going to be doing what, like Frankfurt did last season. Basically, go all in for this competition. Whereas for Union single loss, they've been amazing. They have been fantastic this season in the Europa League, and they knocked out one of the their their rivals, you know, Union, uh, um, Union Berlin, and of course they did it in a comfortable fashion. Now I think for Union single loss, man, this team is really underrated. I like the players. The two Emmy's been good. Then Morris is a good goalkeeper. Then you have Boniface is a great striker. This Union single loss team, they're very well organized. My concern with Leverkusen is that defensively, they're very, very vulnerable. Yes, their attack is amazing. They can score like six or seven goals, right? Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but they're capable of scoring that amount of goals, but they can concede like three or four goals. Whereas this, I feel like this Union St. Galoss team, they're defensively solid and they're great attacking-wise as well. And I feel like they can count hurt by Leverkusen on the counterattack, especially the second leg being at home in Belgium is going to be very, very massive. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here in this one. And I think for this one, guys, I'm actually going with upset. I believe Union single loss will actually win this one. I think they're going to actually prevail in this one. I just feel like for me, Bayer Leverkusen, they're just too defensively, too vulnerable at the back. And I feel like Union single loss can capitalize upon the counterattacks. And I do think this can be interesting. And by the way, guys, I believe the two teams have never played against each other in their history. So this will be the first time in history that the two teams have played against each other. So it's going to be very, very fascinating to see what happens. So if my predictions come to fruition... We'd have a United versus Juventus in the semifinals. And then we would have a uh, Leverkusen, I'm sorry, Union single loss versus Roma in the semifinals, which is some really mouth-watering semifinals. So let me know your predictions in the comment section below, guys. Remember, guys, if you're new out here, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button as well. It really helps the channel grow. Comment down below your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.